I was in church this past Sunday and a woman named Joy handed me a paper that said Bible emergency numbers. I thought about all the things that I've experienced that many of you might be going through as well. And what it does is attach a scripture to each of those things. So no matter what you're going through, there is a spiritual solution to every problem that you are facing. Um, So we're going to look at stress, worry, loneliness, disappointment, bitterness, and a host of others. But let's start with worry. If you are worried, go to Matthew 6. The Bible says, therefore, I tell you, don't worry about your life. Don't worry about what you're going to eat or drink. Don't worry about your body, what you will wear. Is life not more than food and the body not more than clothes? Now I'm paraphrasing a little bit. God says, look at the birds and the air. They don't sow or reap or store away things, yet your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they are? Can any of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? So why do you worry about clothes? Look at the flowers in the field. They don't labor or spin. They don't worry saying, what are we going to eat? What are we going to drink? What are we going to wear? Seek first the kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about itself. Okay, God, what does he say about stress? If you're feeling stressed, dial Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. And it says, come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I'm gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. If you're lonely, lonely, turn to Isaiah 41, 10. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. If you're feeling disappointment, go to Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. He has plans to prosper you. Do you believe that? He has plans not to harm you, but to give you hope and a future. When it comes to bitterness, go to 1 Corinthians 13. And God says this, love is patient. Love is kind. It doesn't envy. It doesn't boast. It's not proud. It does not dishonor other people. It's not selfish. It's not self-seeking. It's not easily angered. It doesn't keep records of wrong. Some of us got a long list and we checking it twice. But God doesn't keep record. What he says is love does not delight in evil, but it rejoices with the truth. It always protects. It always trusts. It always hopes. It always perseveres. Love never fails. And now these three, hope, faith, and love, but the greatest of these is love. If you're, I know the holidays are coming up, so money might be tight. Money might be tight. Go to Psalms 37. And the Bible says, trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land. Take delight in the Lord. And he will give you the desires of your heart. He will give you what you desire. God says, commit your way. Trust in him and he will do this. He will make your righteous reward shine. Shine bright like a diamond. Shine like the dawn. Like the noonday sun. The Bible says, be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Somebody stab you in the back. You're experiencing betrayal. Go to Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is my stronghold of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? When wicked people come against you, enemies come against you, they will stumble and they will fall. The army that comes against you will not win. 
in your heart, you will not fear. Even if the war breaks out against you, you will be confident. What does the Bible say about sin? Go to Psalms 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion. Get rid of my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity. Cleanse me from sin. I know my transgression, transgressions and my sin. If you're feeling discouragement, and I'm hearing this a lot, I'm with you. Let's go to Psalm 34. Let's take a dose of this. Because God says, I will, in the Bible, I'm sorry, it says, I will exalt the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted, let everybody hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Let's speak life into ourselves. In the Bible, it says, I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. A man in this scripture cries out to the Lord and it says the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. And just like that man was saved by God, he can save you too. The angels of the Lord surrounded this person who's and those who fear him and they delivered them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. So, so good. If you're losing hope, Go to 2 Corinthians 4.16. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly, we are wasting away. Inwardly, we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles, remember, it's not going to last. It's temporary. Our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs whatever you are experiencing right now. So we have to fix our eyes on what is not seen. Not on what is seen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Somebody hurt you? Go to John 15, 18. And I love this about Jesus because he's basically saying everything that you've experienced, I've experienced. And then some. In verse 18, he says, if the world hates you, keep in mind, be remember, remember, it hated me first. If you belong to the world, it would love you. As it is, you don't belong to the world because I've chosen you out of the world. That's why the world hates you. And God says, remember that I told you this, a servant is no greater than his master. If they persecuted you, If they persecuted me, I'm sorry. So God says, if they persecuted me, they will persecute you also. But if they obey me, they will obey you. They will treat you this way because of my name. For they do not know the one who sent me. Experiencing any sickness in your body? Lots of scriptures around this one, but I just want to go to Exodus 23 verse 24. Actually, this is 25. Exodus 23, 25, worship the Lord, your God, and his blessing will be on your food and water. It'll be on everything that you touch. The Bible says, I will take away sickness from among you and none will miscarry or be barren in your land. I will give you a full lifespan. Experience in negativity, go to Colossians 3, 12. Therefore, as God has chosen people holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself with compassion, with kindness, with humility, with gentleness, with patience. If you do all that, there's no room for negativity. The Bible says, bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has any grievance against someone, forgive them. God says, forgive them because I forgave you. And he says, over all of these virtues, put on love which binds them all together in perfect unity. He says, let the peace of Christ rule in your heart and be thankful. Let the message of God dwell among you 
and teach one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your heart. And whatever you do, God says, whatever you do, whether you speak in a word or doing a deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God, the Father, through him. What does the Bible say about sadness? Go to John 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe in me also. My father's house has many rooms. If that wasn't so, I wouldn't have told you that. That's basically what he's saying. I would not have told you that I'm going there to prepare the place for you. And if I go and prepare that place for you, I'm going to come back and I'm going to take you with me so that you can be where I am. But God says, you know the way. You know the way to the place that he is going. In danger, experience in danger, go to Psalm 91. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge. He is my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely he will save you. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings, you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield. You will not fear the terror of the night. God's going to protect you. If you're scared, go to Isaiah 41, 10. God says, do not fear for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. He says, I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. And then I saved faith, lacking faith for last, because I know that this is a big one for many of us right now, especially in the time that we're in. It's crazy. It's a lot of stuff going on out in the world right now. But what I love about Jesus right here is he's like, y'all better check my record. I'm going to need y'all to look back. And if you're not, let me let me run off my resume real quick. Because you're making me too small. Right? And I'm bigger than that. Because we know that God can do above and exceedingly and abundantly and all of that more than what we can ask or even want or speak. But God is like, in case you forgot, let me understand what faith has done and can do. So I encourage you, if you do have Hebrews 11, to open it up again. I'm kind of paraphrasing through it, but mark this one so you can come back to it. It says, now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed by God. So what is seen is not made out of what was visible. And now he's going to go through it. He said, by faith, Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. That was by faith. By faith, he was commended as righteous. And by faith, Abel still speaks, even though he is dead. God's like, that's what faith's going to get you. By faith, Enoch was taken from his life. So he didn't have to experience death. He couldn't be found because God took him away. He said, without faith, it's impossible to please me. You can't please me if you don't have faith and you don't believe in me and you don't believe in what I can do. I'm not impressed. It is impossible to please God any other way. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists, must believe in his power. And God continues on and he's saying by faith, Noah, when he was warned about the things that he didn't see, he built an ark anyways to save his family. By faith, he condemned the world and became the heir of the righteousness. By faith, Abraham was called to go to a place where he would later receive an inheritance and he obeyed and he went, even though he did not know where he was going. He trusted God and went anyway. He did that by faith. By faith, he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents as Isaac and Jacob. 
For he was looking forward to the city with foundations whose architect and builder was God. He knew the foundation that he was standing on. He believed that. By faith, Sarah, who was past the childbearing age, was able to have children because she considered him faithful who had made the promise to her. She believed in what God would do. All these people were still living by faith when they died. So they took faith to the grave. God continues on. He says, by faith, Abraham, when God tested him, he offered Isaac as a sacrifice. He he, he was willing to sacrifice his only son. Even though he knew that that was the only way that he was going to get his offspring. But Abraham knew what God could do. He believed that. He knew that God could raise the dead. And so in a manner of speaking, he did receive Isaac back from the dead because he trusted God with that. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau in regard to their future. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of Joseph's sons and worship. This is all by faith. By faith, Moses' parents hid him for three months after he was born because they saw he was not an ordinary child. And they were not afraid of the king. By faith, Moses, when he had grew up, he refused to be known as a son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. By faith, people passed through the Red Sea on dry land. But when the Egyptians tried, not so dry. They were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after the army marched around them for seven days. By faith, the prostitute, Rahab, because she welcomed the spies, was not killed with those who were disobedient. And I love verse 32. Because God is like, what more can I say? it's, It's a mic drop right now. What more shall I say? I don't have time. He's like, I don't even have time to run run through all everything else I done done. I don't have time to tell you about Gideon. I don't have time to tell you about Samson, David, and Samuel, and all the prophets who whose whose faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, and gained what was promised to shut the mouth of lions. God's like, that's what my faith will do. Quench the fury of the flames and escape the edge of the sword, whose weaknesses was turned into strength and who became powerful in battle. That's what my faith does. Women received back their dead and they were raised to life again. These were all commended for their faith. So I wanted to end on that and encourage you that no matter what you are going through in your life, God is going through you with it. He's going He's going through you with it. He's not waiting for you to come out of it. He's right there in the midst of it with you. And he's experienced everything that you are experiencing and then some. So when you don't know where else to go or where, where else to turn in your life right now, and, and I'm speaking to myself right now because I love where God has me because I'm, I'm turning more towards scripture and towards the Bible. And I'm turning to God to look for my answers. He's always there for you. And he gave us his word. And we can hold God to his word. Don't turn to the world. Don't look to the world for answers. Because as John Maxwell said in a sermon once, it's constantly changing. Don't put your faith in something that is constantly changing. Hold on to something that never changes. And that's our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and his promises for us. So I'm praying for your peace at this time in your life, this season in your life, this moment. I'm praying that you find comfort in whatever it is that you're experiencing. Go to these scriptures. So I just wanted to end this with a prayer, dear God. Help us to become faithful. Lord, help us to trust in you. 
Lord, draw us closer to you during these times. Lord, and and help us to be walking, talking, visible manifestations of you, of your love. God, help us not to fear, not to stress, not to worry, not to lose hope. But to have love, joy, peace, and faith. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.